Hello everyone, in this video we will be going over a guide for the warp hike in Dauntless. Before we get started, please note I was having issues making the buttons on the switch transparent, so the letters appear differently when going over different button inputs. Other than that, let's get started. The first part of this video will be about the combos. The first combo we have is the piercing flurry. The piercing flurry combo is done through a series of light attacks that does not drain stamina while using it. On screen we have 4 regular light attacks and a hold light attack as our final input. Your hold light attack is the combo finisher and you can slightly turn either way during this animation. A visual clue of when you are about to do the finisher of this combo is when your weapon lights up based on the elements of the weapon you are using. The purpose of this combo is to expose a wound on a behemoth, which causes you to enter an Aether Rush, which is a buff represented by this icon and a blue aura around your character that increases your attack damage, attack speed, movement speed by 15% and 15 stamina regeneration for a duration of 20 seconds. Aether Rush will be granted to those who assist or expose the wound on a behemoth and can be applied or refreshed to anyone that deals 1500 damage to a wounded part. You can tell how close you are to an Aether Rush by the second icon as every 300 damage you deal to a wounded part is represented by a number 1 through 4 and once you deal the threshold of 1500 damage the Aether Rush duration gets refreshed. You will be able to tell when a behemoth is wounded when the words wounded in red appear on screen and a blue trail is left on the behemoth's part, which lasts for 15 seconds. You can only wound the behemoth's part once, so once it's gone, you will have to wound another part to maintain Aether Rush. A dodge light attack can be used as a follow-up from dodging a behemoth attack, or closing a small gap of distance between you and the behemoth. A dodge light attack can also be used to interrupt a behemoth, or to seamlessly transition into a piercing flurry combo. Another way to close the gap in distance is through a jump poke. A jump poke is a light attack done while midair. The benefit of a jump poke is that it maintains your movement speed and if done close enough to the ground it slides your character in the direction you were going, as you can continue a piercing flurry combo from there. Here are some examples of the jump light attack in combat. After I interrupted Embermane, I sprinted then jumped light attack towards Embermane while maintaining my momentum and transitioned into a piercing flurry combo from there. After stunning Karabak, I jumped light attack towards the tail to start another piercing flurry combo. The second combo we have is called the Aether Harvester. The Aether Harvester combo is a series of three heavies that consume stamina for every hit of the combo. The purpose of this combo is to provide stagger damage against the behemoth, allowing you to stun it for a brief amount of time. At any point of this combo, a behemoth can also be interrupted. However, if you want to consistently interrupt without trading hits, I advise going to the left for your initial part of the heavy swing for the best chances of not getting hit. Just like a dodge light attack, a dodge heavy is used to close a small gap of distance and provide a source of interrupt, as it also allows for a seamless transition into the rest of the heavy combo. When it comes to the jump heavy, you don't maintain your speed compared to that of the jump light attack, so it's advised to do this only in certain situations like interrupting Koshai. Up next we have is the pike charge. The pike charge is done through holding a light attack while moving in any direction. Pike charge closes the distance between you and the behemoth fast while draining your stamina in return. The pike charge is also a source of an interrupt, but for the best chance of not getting hit is at the end of the pike charge. As your character stops, the pike gets pushed slightly more forward, allowing you to have a better distance to hit the behemoth without getting hit yourself. The pike charge can be used to transition into a piercing flurry or an aether harvester combo. Now let's cover alternating combos. Alternating combos consist of using a mix of button inputs from the previous combos. The purpose of alternating combos is for repositioning without having to restart your combo over. Being familiar with the previous combos is important because alternating combos can be done in any input order until you reach the finisher of one of the combos. Once the finisher combo is started, the alternating combo is reset. For example, 
Piercing Flurry has 4 light attack inputs before its finisher, while Aether Harvester has 2 before it. That means you can alternate between these until you reach one of the finishers, which is the whole light attack from Piercing Flurry, or the third heavy attack from Aether Harvester. We will compare the light and heavy attacks to each other to know when we should alternate the combo. Light attacks are stationary attacks but are able to let you turn up to a 90 degree angle for every regular light attack input. Heavy attacks however let you move but are harder to control if you want to turn in a certain direction. By mixing the two together, we can use the light attacks to angle our combos better in the direction where we want to go, while our heavy attacks let us move towards that direction. Here are two examples of alternating combos. The first we have is alternate into flurry. We can start off our combo through either light or heavy attacks. As we input our combos, keep track of how many light and heavy attacks we do. Once we have done four light attacks, our fifth light attack needs to be hold in order to finish off the alternating combo as a piercing flurry combo. As long as we did not do a total of 3 heavy attacks in the sequence, the hold light attack can be done either after the 4th regular light attack or after 1 or 2 heavy attacks. The next example is alternate into harvester. Just like the previous example, you can start off with either light or heavy attacks as we also keep track of how many light and heavies we do. Once we have done 2 heavy attacks, the 3rd heavy attack will finish our alternating combo as an aether harvester. As long as we did not do 5 light attack inputs in the sequence, the third heavy attack can be done right after the second heavy attack, or after the first, second, third, or fourth light attack. Let's go over an in-depth fight with Karabak. As I mouth teleport in, my primary focus against Karabak is to wound the head, as I use my first swing of the heavy to move closer. I used four light attacks and delayed my flurry combo with another heavy, so that when Karabak turned around, I could focus on wounding the head with the flurry finisher. Once the head was wounded, I alternated between the heavy and light attacks to adjust my positioning to spin on the head of Karabak. Once it was staggered, I moved to the tail with the regular flurry combo. The part broke on the first heavy swing, so I continued my heavy combo to go toward the left claw and started a light attack combo on it to try and wound it, but the part broke before I could wound it. After that, I did a light attack to change the angle where I wanted to go and one heavy to move slightly forward to wound the claw I just broke. After the wound, I went in with another heavy towards the back leg and proceeded with a piercing flurry combo to wound and break the leg. Once the back leg broke, I pretty much just light and heavy attacked the wounded parts because I knew a shock proc was close, and it happened on my jump light attack. After a few heavy attacks, I Koshai Lantern to teleport to the other side of Karabak, used two light attacks to change to a 180 degree angle, and did one heavy to move closer to the right claw, as I finished off Karabak with a piercing flurry combo. Now let's go over the Warpike's weapon meter. The Warpike's meter has different sections on it that will represent the ammo quality of the special you use when you store your ammo and how effective that will be. In order to generate meter, we just need to attack, but different attacks generate different percentages of meter per hit. The light attacks for example gives 2% meter generation per hit and takes 3 combos in order to max the meter, while heavy attacks generate 7% meter per hit and take 2 combos to max. The meter also slowly goes down over time. The first section of the weapon meter is the 10% threshold mark and it's the very first section you need to reach in order to store your ammo. When stored, the specials quality will be 10% of what its maximum potential will be. The indicator for this stored ammo quality is shown as the missile icon being at one third full. The next threshold is at the 33% mark. When stored, the ammo quality will be 33% of its maximum potential, and the indicator will be shown as two thirds full. The third threshold is located at the 66% mark, and ammo stored will have 66% of its maximum potential, as the indicator will be shown completely full. The fourth threshold is at the 90% mark and any ammo stored after this is at its maximum potential. The indicator for this ammo will be represented as a full icon with a glowing effect around it. So in general, you want to get your meter as close to full as possible for the best results on your special. Now let's go over the specials. The Warpack has three different specials in the game which are Concussive Payload, Savage Wellspring, and Reckless Leap. The Concussive Payload Special is the standard special that you get when you first start playing the Warpike. 
Once stored, the ammo is converted into a missile that holds you in place while aiming as it deals up to 1200 damage and can interrupt behemoths on contact. The damage of the special is affected by how much power you have compared to the behemoth and can also be increased with damage cell perks. Let's go over the aim animation of the payload special. The line you see in the middle shows where the missile is being aimed at. Around that is the many locations the missile can end up going to. The wider this area is, the more inaccurate your missile will be. So for the best accuracy, you have to wait until only the line is visible so that the missile will hit wherever you are aiming at. This is the ideal way to use the special. One of the only exceptions is if you're very close to the behemoth, then you can fire the missile early if you know it's going to hit them anyway, to fire additional missiles or go back into a combo faster. Another thing to note is that if you take too long, the missile will fire on its own, and the way to prevent that is through a dodge. A dodge cancels your animation and prevents your special from being used, allowing you to save it and use it at another time. So if you are looking for a way to deal a high amount of damage or reliably safe interrupt, then this special is a solid choice. The second special is Savage Wellspring. Savage Wellspring is unlocked through the Slayer's Path and is a buff that gives up to 30% crit chance for 10 seconds to you and anyone else that stands inside the aura. One thing to keep in mind is that only one Savage Wellspring buff can be active at a time. This means if you activate the special when one is still in use, then the duration of the newly used special will override the old one. This also means that even if multiple people have the special activated, you can only gain the benefit of one Savage Wellspring. If you are looking for a special that benefits you and the team greatly, then Savage Wellspring is the way to go. The final special we have is Reckless Leap. Reckless Leap is unlocked through the trial shop at Lady Luck that launches you forward and deals up to 1500 damage. The special provides a source of wound damage on behemoth parts. Reckless Leap can also be used to interrupt behemoths, but can only be done during the end of the leap. Some tips to know when using this special is that the further you are from the behemoth, the more damage Reckless Leap does, and just like Concussive Payload, your power compared to the behemoth and damage cell perks increase the special's damage. The attack speed also affects the time it takes you to reach the behemoth, so the more attack speed you have, the faster Reckless Leap's animation is. Do keep in mind, Dauntless has an attack speed cap of 50%, so be sure to not go over that or else you aren't getting any benefit from too much attack speed. Just like Concussive Payload, you can dodge out of the animation if you want to cancel using your special for repositioning. Reckless Leap is a very fun special to use with useful mobility to close the distance between you and the behemoth and provide large amounts of damage. In terms of mods, there are 5 in the game but only 2 of which are worth mentioning and they are Executioner Spearhead and Munitions Amplifier. Executioner Spearhead is unlocked through the Trial Store. Executioner Spearhead gives an 8% damage bonus when you expose a wound or assist on a wound and it stacks up to 5 times for 40% damage for a duration of 45 seconds. Duration gets refreshed for every additional wound. This mod is the best to use if you consistently expose wounds on Behemoth and maintain the damage bonus it provides. Once Executioner Spearhead timer runs out, the damage bonus is reset. A tip to maintain Executioner Spearhead is that you can still wound a Behemoth once it's dead as long as the part wasn't already wounded. You have a few seconds to do so before the Behemoth's body disappears. Munitions Amplifier is unlocked through the Slayer's Path. Munitions Amplifier increases the ammo quality of a stored special over time. The mod also increases the effectiveness of the special by an additional 25%. For example, Savage Wellspring at max quality gives a 30% crit chance for 10 seconds. With Munitions Amplifier, the crit chance gets increased to 37.5% instead for the 10 second duration. If you are not able to maintain Executioner Spearhead, then this is the only mod worth considering. Anyways, that will do it for this video. If you guys find it helpful, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you plan on making any purchases on Epic, my creator code is self-manifest if you want to support me. You can also find me over on Twitch or join my Discord server. Links to both are in the description. Until next time, take care.